Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good Saturday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on the 17th of December. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can find that, and tonight it should be updated at weather.gov slash Alaska. We did have some problems last night, as you may have seen. Uh, some of the images weren't updating. Some of the warning watch and advisory graphics that you see when you first arrive on those pages weren't updated as well. All of that should be a lot better tonight, so uh, go forth and check your websites and uh, have high confidence that things are going to work for you tonight. You can always call the Alaska Weather Information Line, 800-472-0391, uh, and if you have questions, we welcome you to email us. We'd love to take your weather questions, we'd like to see your weather pictures, and we'd love to share them on the show. And uh, anytime you have a question about the website, the show, or a comment, even a suggestion. Love to hear it. We know the show's not perfect and we'd like to make it better for you. So anytime, please contact us at nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov. Now, on with the show. This is it. Here's uh, what we see in southeast tonight. Hyder and the area around the Misty Fjords still under a winter storm warning. That'll continue well into Sunday. We're still watching for the potential of one to two feet of snow. That's a great deal of snow there. And of course, the uh, major concern with that would be your ability to clear it and not get hurt while doing it. So take great care there. Travel, of course, would be a concern as well, going out towards Stewart, so just be careful. And uh, northward, up toward Juneau, especially north of the Juneau Airport, uh, the winter weather advisory is in effect now. That'll continue for just a little while longer tonight if it hasn't been canceled right as we're speaking. Uh, but the expectation of storm totals will be around three to six inches generally north of the Juneau Airport. And same goes for areas up around the Klondike Highway and White Pass, expecting a total of three to six inches there as that winter weather advisory is nearing its end as well. A look out to the west and you can still see a whole lot of red. Last night we were talking about a high wind watch. This is now a high wind warning. As the storm is passing ADAC, uh, we just got a report just moments ago actually of a about 73 mile an hour gust there from the west. And so applying very basic meteorology, uh, you would assume there that the Low pressure system is just east now of ADAC pulling in westerly winds and that gust again will probably continue to climb as we go through the evening hours. The gust from the west could reach up to 90 miles per hour ahead of the system though, uh, probably still dealing with strong and gusty winds from the south and east. Those could reach up to 75 miles per hour. So ahead of the storm, 75 mile an hour gusts from the south and east behind the storm from the west, gusts up to 90 miles per hour. That high wind warning will go until about noon on Sunday. So this is going to be kind of a long term event with wind for the central chain there as that moves eastward. Uh, winds will be moving through Nikolsky and Alaska and Dutch Harbor and we're not expecting those yet to reach that level. Uh, but there will be some wind for you and uh, hurricane uh, storm force and hurricane force winds are surrounding some of the coastal marine areas there as well. You'll see that in the marine update here in just a little bit. So a lot of wind across the Aleutians. Uh, extreme wind, let's say, across the central chain as we go through tonight and midday tomorrow. Here's a look at that weather pattern, and as you see through mid-afternoon anyway, the low pressure system there had just about reached ADAC, and now it is just past there pulling in those westerlies. The front itself extended across the eastern chain and was moving into the Alaska Peninsula. Out ahead of that, a lot of dry air and warm air with southerlies working up the west coast and chewing away at the ice across southwestern Alaska inside of Bristol Bay, the YK Delta, inside of Norton Sound, and all the way through the Bering Strait and the Chukchi Sea. Considerable degradation of the ice there just in the last two days, thanks to those southerly winds. A lot has changed there. We're still watching the ice there around Shishmar up there from uh, Cape Espenberg all the way out toward Wales. Remember, last night we were talking about a Polina that had formed. And while that is not quite as clear as it was yesterday, we did see some pictures from you on Instagram. And uh, thanks to our friend Dennis there up in Shishmaref, who uh, shared that there. And we appreciate things like that. When you tag that with AKWX on your social media, whether it's Twitter or you make a comment on our Facebook page, NWS Alaska, or on Instagram, things like that, that allows us to see that and clues us in what's going on in your community. And it helps immensely 
uh, for us when we have to do our job and make decisions to help you make decisions there. So as far as the ice goes there around uh, Espenberg all the way out toward uh, Wales, we're still watching for those northerly winds to come back around. The amount or the concentration of high concentration ice might have changed a little bit there just in the last couple of days. So we're still keeping an eye on that there, but the main time frame that we'll be watching would be late Sunday night and into Monday there for some of that to come back toward uh, the northern coast of the Seward Peninsula from Cape Espenberg all the way out toward Wales. So still a thing we're monitoring. As we look at uh, the eastern gulf, you can see that flow of moisture working its way into southeast. A lot of this has been snow to start with today, but just one example, as the front, the warm front, passed over uh, Gustavus earlier today, it went from snow and then over to rain, and temperatures only changing about one, maybe two degrees, but that's all it took, and the uh, weather just changed there. So Gustavus, one example there of what's coming your way. Rain for most places there now across a good chunk of central and northern sections of southeast, but we're still watching that snow out around Hyder, where that winter storm warning could bring you one to two feet of snow. Across the interior, uh, things are starting to clear up from southwest to north and east. Now, there's still a chance for some snow showers in the region, and if you look outside right now across south central, you're kind of going, where is that going to come from? Uh, it does look like a relatively clear night to the south and west, but uh, as things wrap around here, there might be just enough moisture where uh, conditions will cloud back in. So not sure we're completely out of the woods just yet, but uh, things are changing around South Central right now. And that's after a day starting out with some freezing rain and snow in the region. If you are driving around any part of South Central uh, to Kenai and to Anchorage, you probably experience some uh, not nice weather. Uh, not the weather you want. It's the weather we get, right? Uh, the uh, cold front moving across the eastern gulf will continue to ring out that warmth and that rain for many areas in the southeast. For South Central, there's still snow working its way northward into the mountains and across the interior pockets of snow we're seeing there across the north slope. A little bit of fog and light snow all the way around the north and eastern coast. Across the west, the 946 millibar low is the headline event uh, tonight. At, uh, moving east now of Adak and drawing in those stronger westerly winds and heavy snow just in the last few hours was reported around Shemya. As we look at tonight, low pressure will hover in the southern bearing at 947 millibars, the front uh, moving very close to the Pribilovs with periods of snow out across the central and western bearing. Just south of Kodiak, a 988 millibar low will take on the form of a triple point, and that's going to re-energize that warm air moving northward. So this is the first system now moving through southeast behind that rain and then probably some breaks and showers, and then another surge of that working its way northward tonight and uh, bringing another surge of warm air coming your way towards southeast. For south central, we expect clouds to come back in. The possibility of snow showers continue for many, and that will continue for the interior as well. Across the west and into Norton Sound, watch for snow showers there across uh, some parts of Nome, Unocleet, uh, Jack Tulik, out toward Wales and north of St. Lawrence Island. Getting into Sunday, you can see low pressure at 947 millibars now across the southern bearing, gradually filling in, but it is still making wind there across uh, most of the central chain. Those westerlies will be the strongest part of the storm, again with wind gusts up to 90 miles per hour for Adak and Atka and communities there in the central Aleutians. Some of the strongest wind will still be working its way eastward, but uh, gradually filling in and pulling away from some of the eastern chains. So we're still watching that carefully. Watch for plenty of rain showers. Some of those intense across the core of that storm. And around uh, Kodiak Island, a 963 millibar low will keep the front bank right up against the northern and eastern gulf. This eventually works its way into southeast, bringing out more rain and then adding a little bit of drier air into your forecast as you gradually get through Sunday afternoon. And that's about when we expect some of that high intensity weather for places like Hyder and the northern sections of southeast to gradually fall off. Now, as you look at the interior, well, we've got a few snow showers to worry about there, but that's really about it. Probably some gusty winds from time to time as the pressure gradient tightens up across some of the mountain passes and across Norton Sound and into the northern interior and the western coast. Lingering clouds and snow showers may be found there, uh, areas of fog possibly across the north slope, and snow showers will continue on the back side of the Bering Sea low pressure system there for places like Kiska and all the way out towards Shemya. Looking at Monday and starting up the week, Periods of rain should be expected for southeast. Low pressure hovers in the northern gulf at 974 millibars. Watch for periods of rain and snow across the southern bearing and into Bristol Bay, and a rain and snow mixed across the central and western chain. A 967 millibar low there will be north of Nikolsky and Unalaska Dutch Harbor. 
Rain and snow showers may wrap around into St. Paul and St. George. A better chance that that's going to be cold enough for all snow at this point. Probably blustery there as well. Many uh, areas across the interior will be seeing snow showers around the mountains. A little bit of drier air for the Yukon Valley from tip to tail. And uh, all the way out across the uh, Koyukuk uh, region as well as uh, folks on the south facing slopes of the Brooks Range with a 981 millibar low just inside of Kotzebue Sound. So quite a bit of active weather around Alaska as we go through the next couple days and into the beginning of the week. But we still have a very strong system there sitting across southern parts of the Bering to start up your Monday. Now on to current temperatures across the region. It was a milder afternoon for many in southeast. You see most areas were in the 30s. But as you get up toward Hyder, still a lot of cold air lingering there around the Misty Fjord. 16 degrees there, while it was 41 degrees down around Ketchikan and Metlakatla. As you get up to Yakutat, it was 39. Prince William Sound temps hovering close to, if not just below that freezing point, around 30 in Valdez. Today, 32, and it uh, did get fairly mild by the afternoon in Anchorage this afternoon. 31 in Kenai, 34 in Homer, and Talkeetna had 30 degrees. Kodiak was in the mid-30s as well. 7 degrees in Fairbanks and Eagle this afternoon. Uh, Fort Greeley had 11, Healy was 13, and uh, Fort Yukon. A single three-digit temperature for you this afternoon. 12 around Anaktuvik Pass. Uh, the eastern Beaufort Seacoast was hovering just below 10 degrees. It was above that in Point Barrow at uh, 13, 12 in Wainwright. Kotzebue sound temps were in the 20s, 30 for Nome, 35 in Savunga, Unalakleet, 31. Galena was 19, McGrath had 18, Bethel, 32, Amonic, about 32 degrees as well. Lake Ileana, close to freezing this afternoon. Low 30s around Bristol Bay, King Salmon and Dillingham. Down the Alaska Peninsula, upper 30s for many, including Sand Point at 39. St. Paul and St. George were both above freezing this afternoon. Unalaska and Dutch Harbor was 41, Adak 37, and Windy, obviously, and 32, and snowing in Shemia. Now, low temperatures tonight will drop into the single digits and stay there for Fairbanks in the middle Tanama Valley, 1 below in Eagle, 12 below in Northway. Southeast, you're looking at temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. Some places like Sitka could make it up to 40. South Central in the lower to mid 20s, 33 in Kodiak Island, above freezing for most of the Alaska Peninsula and the Pribilofs, as well as the central and western chain. 31 in Savunga, 22 in Nome, and 2 in Barrow overnight with a high temperature tomorrow of 7, 3 in Fort Yukon. Low teens for the middle Tanana Valley and Fairbanks. Tanana, you're looking at 12. Down the Parks Highway into South Central, uh, probably mid to upper 20s for many. For Homer and Seward, upper 20s and lower 30s. 39 in Kodiak, upper 30s to low 40s for most in Southeast. Looks like the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay will hover in the mid to upper 30s tomorrow, about 40 in St. Paul and warm there. 27 for Nunavak Island. Nome, you're looking at 28. On to flying weather, we see a widespread swath of IFR across the Yukon Valley and the West Coast tomorrow, all the way into the Arctic, as well as southwest. Parts of Kodiak Island and, of course, the higher terrain for southeast and along the western chain by the afternoon. Expect some improvements along the chain. Parts of southwest and the coastline will see improvements to MVFR. Hit and miss VFR throughout the interior. A large part of the interior should be okay. But once you get north of the Yukon Valley, you start to see uh, MVFR and IFR a lot more, especially as you work across some of the passes. Same goes for areas west of the Alaska Range and more areas in southeast. We'll see poor visibility and low ceilings as we get into the day. Here's your pass conditions now. Anaktuvik Pass heading for IFR, it looks like, throughout the day. Adigan Pass, more of the same. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass also seeing worsening conditions as your Sunday goes on. Rainy Pass, IFR to start some improvements possible there. And the same goes for Windy Pass, might turn over to VFR. Isabel Pass, we expect VFR conditions there. And Mentasta Pass, we expect VFR conditions to develop slowly throughout the day. And the same goes for Tanita Pass. Portage Pass, we expect to see IFR developing throughout a good chunk of the afternoon. Chilkoot and White Pass conditions should worsen as we get into your Sunday. Now, here's freezing levels, and you can see that warm air wrapping around. Low pressure out in the Gulf is slowly kind of creeping northward. That's been enough to change over some of the precipitation in southeast to rain today. For many across the interior, uh, temperatures will remain below freezing to start in the morning. Icing potential will linger above 5,000 feet for southern parts of the Clarence Strait, uh, Haida Gwaii and the Dixon entrance, probably including places like Craig and Klawak as well. Otherwise, uh, light to isolated moderate for a large part of southeast. Uh, the southern tip of the Alaska Peninsula into the central and western chain, generally above 2 to about 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet as you get further east, and 2,000 feet north of the interior and into the west coast, including the Seward Peninsula, uh, Shishmaref, Savunga, and Nome. 
The jet stream shows that wide trough that now encompasses most of the North Pacific. Wind speeds pick up to about 150 knots. This is down a little bit from yesterday where it was hovering around 190 knots. A ridge uh, across the Pacific Northwest now and then all of that cold. If you've been watching the news out of the lower 48, uh, perhaps the national edition, uh, you will probably hear about uh, severe cold snaps across many parts of the nation today where temperatures dropped anywhere from 50 to 70 degrees in some places like Texas, uh, Missouri, uh, and uh, a good part of the Mid-South there where uh, temperatures started out in the 70s and ended up even in the upper 20s today. So significant changes there as a lot of our Arctic cold has moved out of the interior and is heading southward. And we still have waves of low pressure across the southern bearing and across the north slope. Each one of these is an impulse adding to that surface weather you're experiencing now. At 9,000 feet, low pressure continues across the southern bearing. We see a broad southwesterly flow now uh, showing about 60 to 65 knots coming into southeast. Southerlies across the south central coastline in the northern gulf and easterlies working up down the central and western Yukon at 25 to 40 knots. North and easterly winds for the north slope and then a strong inflow across the central and western chain, 50 to 55 knots there, all at 9,000 feet. A little bit lower at 3,000, south and westerlies working in to southeast, about 25 to 40 knots there. Easterlies a little bit faster across uh, parts of the Chugach Range, uh, the Collegiates, and um, the wrangell saint Elias region, I should say, at 20 to 40 knots. And easterlies across the Brooks Range, 50 to 20. Also looking at uh, easterlies light across the north slope, 10 knots there. And westerlies for the central and western chain as high as 65 knots there across places like Adak and Atka. Now, as you look at turbulence, you'll notice that there are a few more blue spots here. Occasional widespread monitor for southwest, including Lake Iliamna, Kodiak Island, large part of the chain, of course. And then severe turbulence, I think that's probably safe to say, for the central and eastern chain tomorrow below 4,000 feet. Watch for considerable chop across the southern half of southeast tomorrow below 4,000 feet. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back with your marine weather and sea ice update in just a few minutes. You know, it'd be a lot of fun to get in this airplane and go flying with this person, but you and I have work to do. So let's talk about how TAFs are formatted. Now, the first line of each TAF starts at the left margin with the report header and the station identifier. Now, all other lines of a TAF will be indented at least five spaces, and any additional lines of a group will be indented six spaces. Now, the first forecast group, the one right after the when, which in this case is 19th day of the month at 11.30 Zulu, and right after the valid time period, which in this case 19th day of the month at 1,200 Zulu, to the 20th day of the month at 1,200 Zulu, that first weather group belongs for the beginning time, which is the 19th day of the month at 1,200 Zulu. So that's the beginning of the forecast period, and that's the beginning forecast weather. And what we're forecasting in this particular case is a variable wind of 16 knots gusting to 28 knots. And we have better than six statute miles visibility and scattered clouds at 500 feet. And we'll check over in the left-hand side. We have broken clouds at 2,500 feet, and those are cumulonimbus clouds. So that's the first forecast weather. Now, a significant change in the weather is indicated by a new forecast group. We'll call that a from group. In this case, it says from 1845 Zulu. Now, this from group will always start on a new line, and it'll be indented five spaces from the left margin. Now, from groups have to contain all of the elements of the forecast, if those elements exist, because this is basically a new weather forecast. Other groups might contain only the changes. Now, the from group, as you see right here, has indicated a change in the forecast conditions, but it's one that's expected to take place pretty quickly. At any rate, the change is expected to take place in less than one hour. So we have here the from group, and what we're saying from 1845 Zulu, the wind is now expected to be from 160 degrees at 10 knots. We still have better than six miles, statute miles visibility, but the sky is clear. So that is the from group, and that's for a relatively quick change in the weather. But if you have a more gradual change in the weather that's indicated uh, that it might occur over a time period, then you'll use becoming instead. Here we have becoming from the time period at 2200 Zulu going to 2400 Zulu. We're having a becoming, which is a gradual change in the weather. So 
That's going to take place in, the, in this time group, and it's normally a two-hour time period. It could be less than that, but it's a gradual change in the weather. Now, the change is the wind is from 200 degrees at 13 knots, gusting to 20 knots. Let's see if we have anything else on the left-hand side for that, and we don't. So all we had now was a change in the wind. All other forecast items are expected to remain as they were previously forecast, and only the wind changed, and that wind will be the prevailing wind from then on in until it gets changed again. So the wind from then on in will be as changed in that becoming group. Now we have another group up here called a tempo group, and this indicates uh, changes that are going to be temporary in nature. So temporary in nature from 400 to 500 Zulu, here are the conditions. And these are changes that are expected to affect the weather for less than one hour each time they happen. And in total, the last uh, less than half of this time period indicated right here. Now, they're going to tell us what is going to change during that temporary group. And temporarily here, we'll have from 400 to 500 Zulu, broken clouds at 5,000 feet. Now, that is the only thing that is expected to change. All other elements are expected to remain as forecast during previous time periods. Now we have something coming up here, probability 40. And what they're saying is the probability is 40% that this will occur. They could also say probability 30%. So that probability, by the way, is that group is used to forecast the probability of, we'll say, thunderstorms or other precipitation and, uh, and also the associated weather conditions that might go along with that. So here we have probability 40 that the, uh, uh, during the time period from 600 Zulu to 800 Zulu that we'll have two statute miles visibility and a thunderstorm with moderate rain. So that's worth talking about. And there's a probability of 40% that's going to happen. And also an overcast with 800 foot clouds. And those clouds will be cumulonimbus clouds. And then we have another becoming. And the thing I want to point out in this becoming from 900 to 1100 Zulu, we have here no significant weather, NSW. And I wanted to tell you what that means. No significant weather will be included in a becoming or a tempo group to indicate that no significant weather is expected in the previously mentioned weather has ended. So now you have a good idea how TAPs are formatted. Here's a look at the sea ice edge. Remember how we were saying the western coast was changing a lot thanks to the southerly winds? Well, look at all the expanded area of the blue color. That means less than 80% ice concentration. That doesn't really talk about the thickness at all, but it tells us that there is a significant changes here compared to what we were looking at just a few days ago. Even inside of Norton Sound now, you can see that what was once solid white is now chewed up there thanks to the southerly winds. We also have lower concentrations ice across eastern parts of Kotzebue Sound. And remember, that area just north of Cape Espenberg to Wales was right about in here. So we're concerned about that high concentration ice coming back closer to shore somewhat quickly once those northerly winds kick in. And that'll be sometime early on Monday morning. So once again, uh, just keep watch of the weather. If you're there around Shishmaref, out toward Cape Espenberg or westward Wales, uh, the ice conditions may be on the move as you get into early Monday morning. Here's a look at southeast now. Winds are moving from the south and the east, about 35 to 40 knots or so on the inside of Clarence Strait. Eight foot seas expected there, four foot seas inside of Lynn Canal. Higher gusts all the way up the outer coast for sure, 35 to 45 knots with the highest wind speeds up around Yakutat there. Uh, seas around 18 feet and much stronger gusts will be possible through Sunday. Conditions should improve a little bit on Monday. A little bit more of a southwesterly flow coming in uh, on the outer coast for Monday, 35 to 40 knots. There were 27 foot seas up north, 24 down south. And uh, looking at 6 to 10 foot seas on the inside, 30 to 35 knots coming in from the south for the inside passages there on Monday. Now for Sunday, across south central, strong northerly winds are going to kick in here. 35 to as strong as 50 knots there with the some storm force winds in many locations, uh, 23 to 24 knots for areas uh, west of the Barrens and into Shelikov Strait, 22 to 24 feet. Looking for a strong east to westerly flow across the northern gulf outside of Resurrection Bay and into the eastern Barrens, 17 to 19 feet. But look at this westerly flow opposing that off of Kodiak Island, 50 knots there with a 25 foot sea northeasterlies, blustery inside of Prince William Sound at 35 knots. Conditions do improve on Monday. We'll still have a, a blustery southwesterly flow and still looking at 50 knot winds outside of Prince William Sound. Northwesterlies inside the sound at 20 with a four foot sea. Winds calm considerably across the Cook Inlet, west of the Barrens and inside of Shelikov Strait, looking at only 15 knots from the south on a five foot sea. The Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay, an easterly flow inside of the bay. 35 knots with a nine foot sea, looking at southwesterlies across the southern tip of the Alaska Peninsula. 40 to 45 with 20 foot seas on the north side, 33 foot seas on the south side. Southwesterlies continue up toward Castle Cape and Chignik at 45 knots with a 27 foot sea there. Monday conditions improve on the Bering Sea Coast, 20 knots and 
Many areas, 7 to 13 foot seas there, and south and westerly winds continue for the Pacific coast, 40 to 45 with 25 to 32 foot seas on Monday. Now for the Aleutians. We know it's windy. How windy is it? It looks like storm force and hurricane force winds will be the rule as we go through Sunday. High wind warnings continue on land with gusts becoming as strong as 90 miles per hour there on land as those westerlies kick in and that will be the trend for the rest of tonight and into tomorrow. 50 to 55 knots across the Bering Sea coast, 55 to 65 knots across the Pacific with 44 to 49 foot seas, 39 foot seas west of Adak and 20 foot seas uh, west of Kiska with a northwesterly flow. For Monday, big time improvement west of Adak. And east of that, we're still dealing with uh, some pretty strong winds, 45 to 50 knots there, 26 to 33 foot seas on the Pacific side, and 17 to 22 foot seas there for the Bering Sea coast as you get into Monday. For the west coast, broad easterly flows sweeping off the land, 25 to 40, 10 to 14 foot seas closer to the coastline, 15 foot seas around St. Matthew, and easterlies over the Pribilofs, 30 uh, with 17 foot seas there. For Monday, look for a north and easterly flow out of the Bering Strait, 20 knots with 6 to as high as 12 foot seas in the north, and 12 foot seas continue for the Pribilofs with a 30 knot wind from the north and east. For the north slope, easterlies 15 to 20 for the Beaufort Sea coast and looking at more of a southeasterly flow off of Cape Lisburn, that's at 20 knots outside of Kotzebue Sound, also 20 knots from the east. Northerlies kick in on Monday. Again, that's what we're watching to push some of that high concentration ice closer to Cape Espenberg to Wales and Flint City. Easterlies for the Beaufort, 10 to 20 there and continuing through your Monday. Recapping tonight's weather, a winter storm warning continues for the Hyder area. One to two feet of snow possible there by uh, the end of the daytime tomorrow. Winter weather advisories are wrapping up around Juneau and for the White Pass region, storm totals there will be close to three to six inches of snow. And we have a high wind warning for the central Aleutians that will continue through about noon tomorrow with westerlies as strong as 90 miles per hour. Those will be the gusts coming in on the backside of this storm system here at 947 millibars across uh, the southern Bering Sea that continues traveling eastward. Snow showers possible for many in south central. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.